Hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap where I've got three great stories for you this week. One about memory and how being a bird watcher can actually help your memory, which is a great story for any bird watchers out there. Uh, two, a story that is about a fantastic new app that you can get for your phone that can identify bird calls. And of course, the seasonal issue of magpies across Australia and their defense of their territories. So welcome to my weekly bird wrap. Now my first story this week is about memory and why bird watchers uh, potentially have such good memory and can continue to keep good brain fun function as they age. Apparently it turns out if you have a lot of knowledge about a particular subject and detailed knowledge you have to keep in order. And it could be bird watching or it could be coin collecting or it could be about um, naval ships or whatever the subject might be. But if you're obsessed about a particular subject and have a lot of detailed knowledge with lots of numbers and lots of order, apparently having that structure in your brain helps you with your long-term memory and helps you with the aging of the brain. So next time someone says to you, if you're a bird watcher and you're passionate, and they say, why are you invo involved in bird watching? You can say it's to keep your brain alive and young and to keep your brain function going as much as anything else that you might do in terms of being interested in birds. So my second story today is about magpies. And of course, at this time of the year in Australia, everyone's talking about the fact that magpies are attacking around nests. And I have some simple, simple instructions and simple stories that I can give you about magpies at this time of the year. First of all, the magpies are trying to defend their young. They will do that for a six week, two month period around nesting time. So it's for a limited period of time. It's also relatively close to where the nest is. So it's a limited area. If you can avoid being in those areas at that time, you'll avoid being swooped by magpies because magpies are well known for protecting their young by swooping in, flying hard, over your head, uh, calling loudly and to try and intimidate you away from their nest. By avoiding the areas at the time, by avoiding the areas um, where they occur, you can avoid that, that interaction. However, sometimes these magpies are set up in places where you just have to travel. You have to move through these areas. And there's some pr simple things that you can do. First of all, they tend to fly in from behind. So by wearing a hat, you're going to dis distract the bird from flying in from behind. Some people put eyes on the back of the hat. I don't know if that has much of an effect. One of the ways of stopping the birds coming in closely is some people put streamers coming out of the top of their hat to stop the bird coming close. All these things can help a bird if it's trying to press its attack by coming in. Now when I say attack, some magpies will actually try and strike you on the top of the head. Now a magpie is a heavy bird, it can't hover very easily, so the strike is not necessarily going to be uh, followed through easily. But there is a hook on the end of the bill. And if they do happen to strike down onto a forehead, it can do some bad damage. And sadly, and it is a fact that some young children may, um, if they're intimidated by a bird, and they, particularly if they fall or look up, they may in fact get a bad injury to their eye or even lose an eye. I would highly recommend protecting children carefully around where you know magpies are swooping and not let children be uh, scared by the birds and potentially become uh, victims of a, of, a, of a followed through attack and I would avoid those areas. So the simple things are avoid the areas, wear appropriate headwear if you can, and if you've got children, make sure that they're well protected near these sites and kept away as much as possible. It is a fact of life that magpies all over Australia will, will attack, some more than others, uh, and we just have to be, uh, uh, be sensible about the interactions we have with these birds. My last story today is groundbreaking, absolutely groundbreaking. We now have effectively a Shazam for bird calls on our phones. Uh, Cornell University has now downloaded an app, uh, uh, loaded an app which we can download onto our phones. I have one on my phone. I can open my phone, I can hear a call, I can point my phone at the call, it records in the app, I can then press a button and the, the app will give me a suggestion about what bird species that call is. Now this is an amazing revolution for people watching birds and I now have lots and lots of calls on my phone. It keeps a, a diary of all the calls I've heard, so I can also use it as a learning, a learning tool. But the magic about this, about this app is that here I am in Canberra, there might be 300 species that occur here. The computer knows that. It only checks the calls of 300 species that are likely to occur here. And so it can give me a suggestion and it might say likely to be a white cockatoo or possibly a, new, a noisy miner or whatever. 
And if you agree with the call and say, yes, it was a noisy miner, you can actually tap and say, yes, I agree. And your recording goes into the database to help build the database of calls, which, makes, which will make eventually the, the, the uh, app even more functional. So I think apparently at the moment there's about 3,000 3, species in the app. There's about 11,000 species of birds in the world. So it is a growing database, but I would highly recommend this. One, because it gives you a learning tool, it gives you an opportunity to identify calls, and it gives you an opportunity to contribute to a massive citizen science project. So BirdNet, B-I-R-D, capital N-E-T, BirdNet is the app. It's free, download it on your phone, have a try, and send me some information through to my website about how you go with it and what you think of it. I'd love to report that back uh, in another show. That's all I have for you this week. If you've enjoyed the stories this week, um, please check out other stories I have on my YouTube channel. Uh, also check out information on my website. And of course, don't forget, I often run trips and tours around various areas, including regular trips in, New in Canberra and southern New South Wales and trips overseas. So check out the tours that I do and happy birding.